everyone. I'm so excited to tell you about this podcast. It's called The DK Project, but it's really The Darren Show. So thanks for tuning in. You're going to want to sit back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Let's go! Hey, it's hey. Friday. You know what that means? Snow. Da- oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's time to rip a podcast. But it is snowing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't like it. Hey, you know what? I don't mind it. I don't mind if it's going to be cold. Let's have snow. Wow, that Are was a little bit guy? manic. I hate it. I like it. I hate it. I like it. <laughs> I am a snowmobile guy, but what happened was is I don't ride them enough. So I just sold one. I did the same thing. I had four. I sold them. And now I have another one I'm selling. I'm done. I, I don't I ride them enough. And rent I, it. I don't need to get hurt. I rent. My body can't do it. I got this marathon thing I got to put together. Oh, child. Mm-hmm. We need to get a marathon update. Are you running in the uh, these this climate? We've taken a little bit of a break. To, oh. to, for, 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 it's over. For, no, it's, it's not. It's over, Rock. No, it is you not. You can't do it. No, it's not over. Come on. You it's don't not. take a break. You just got back into it. Well, I, we're trying to get the knee figured out. So that we think we got it now. Your excuses are like assholes. No, it's not Everybody a knee thing. Everybody has one. Or it's not an excuse thing. It's a body thing, and my, I need to be able to do it. Huh. All right, with us today on the phone, Bob Sensevere. Starting one more time. <laughs> you know, technical difficulties. That's what happens when you're the uh, host and the IT department. You got to do it all. <laughs> How you doing, Bob? I'm just lovely as can be. Now you had mentioned uh, in the prior unrecorded segment that you did uh, <laughs> that you did two shows today uh, from your place and from the KQ uh, morning you, show. Yep. Are you on KQ? What three days a week? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What time do you got to be there? Uh, what time does that event start for you then? 5.30. Damn. Damn. So you're leaving the house at what, 4? Uh, not quite that early. I get up at 4. I try to get out the door by uh, four, between 4.30 and 4.45. Sometimes I actually get out that early. So you got to be, and you got to go to the studio. Yep. It's over by, I live in Buffalo. It's about a 40, 45 minute drive in good weather. Damn. And we don't yeah. have good weather. What's the caffeine caffeine intake on something like that? I don't do caffeine. I'm not really a coffee drinker, and I do Diet Cokes, but I uh, <sighs> I just sort of slog along. And so you, you, uh, are you napping then during the day? <laughs> I, don't, I used to nap. I don't nap anymore. Man. Since I got my CPAP, I don't need nap. <laughs> oh, did you get one? I've had it for years. Oh, I, yeah. would, I could not survive without a nap. Well, neither could I your went, wife. Uh, the CPAP ability. How long did it take yeah, my, to notice a difference? Was it like right it, away? Uh, it was pretty quick. Do you and actually also, notice a difference though? Like I have one and oh yeah. I don't know. My wife you, is much minute. happier, but. You were prescribed one and you stopped using it? Well, yes. I, is well, your wife nearby? Because I want to ask her if your insurance is paid up. No, you know that's <laughs> how Reggie White died, don't you? Yeah, he was well, the first guy. He he brought he brought sleep apnea to the forefront. Well, what it was pro, what it was was I was famer. diagnosed many 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 years ago, and then I lost a, a you know a significant amount of weight, and went and he got retested, and they're like, eh, you know, it's pretty mild. You're probably okay. And uh, Dave, he's lying, isn't he? Well, I, I'm just wondering if he's been <laughs> tested at this particular way. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Are you serious? I think you should head back I, in and get retested. No, I, no, I, no, I, yeah. Hey, I, hold on a second. I'm I have on a question. It. So it is, what, it's, it's what oh. White died from? Yeah, Reggie White died from sleep apnea. Oh, I did not know that. Because the, your heart stops, basically. I mean, I, this was not a diagnosis when I was a kid. Right. My dad, I know had it because it was the classic where like they're snoring and then they're like gasping for air. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, you know, then you just hear them snore again. And that's gasping for air is because you're basically you're uh, you can't get enough air in and your heart may even stop. Not a good thing. So you're like uh, minor league season up. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the real that deal. Does happen until the big and nap happens. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. Either one of you have necks that are of 18 inches? Because yeah, when I, <laughs> I uh, when I when I went in, the doctor who had by the way the skinniest neck I've ever seen, he said <laughs> that. It's pretty much a given that anyone with an 18-inch neck is going to need a CPAP or a sleep apnea. Just think about it. No matter what your size, the bigger your neck is, 
it's not like the bigger you are, the wider uh, airway you have. We all have pretty much the same size, right. no matter what size we are. So there's a lot more fat shoving in on How that How much airway. fat wrapper you have on your airway. And the weight of it, too, I bet, doesn't help. Ugh. So No, it doesn't. Now, I... How big were you? Because you're uh, you're not exactly, you know, felt. <laughs> What's the word? Uh, uh, small. I mean, you're you cut a fine figure, but you're not, you know, you're not really. Uh, Can't thank you enough for all the time. Uh, you know what? I I was at like two fifty five, two sixty, and I got down to one eighty eight, and everybody you thought one eighty eight now. Are you? No. And my right leg. I uh, no. I I I'm probably pushing back to that two sixty. I, I actually just was traveling this week and I had to come to Jesus that I maybe I maybe need to get back on some type of a regimen. I went on that Metafast deal and uh boy the pounds just melt off but there's so they much They do but it, you have to be you really have to be vigilant about you know when you start eating food again right. not and no one that's the problem. I think it's why a lot of these diet centers are do so well because people have to keep going back. Right. Did you did you do that Metafast thing? I did Metafast a few times through KQ, and I did I lost a, a great deal of weight. Now I haven't put it all back on, but I've put some of it back on. Well, and, you know, and I was up in the range you were, and I'm shorter than you are. I got down. I think I was under two hundred five. Hmm. You know, and I'm not that far from it, but I'm I put weight on. I uh, you know I would go back on it in a minute, but it's ridiculously expensive, and that soy. That that is not good for a man. <laughs> it is everything about it is uh, bad, but everything about the diet it was easy. Well, there's many I different will. diets you can do though, and nah, this I, this I whole just get up my and fat down ass off the couch, right? But this you, up and down thing cannot be good for your body. Like it's not. You need to keep. Yeah, I've only well, done it you, once. Do small portions. None Come of us on, do. we say it. Look, how do you, how do, you do that? Small portion guys, but you also could eat like a slob. If you keep, I don't, they call it keto now, but basically that's a low carb diet. If well, that, you go on low carbs, you could, you know, you can eat all the bacon you want, all the cheese you want. Well, that's your diet, diet, isn't it? Pro cheese and, and nothing yeah, else. But I, I mean, I wind up, probably the bane of my existence is having a Chipotle near the studio. Yeah. Because they don't have low carb uh, tortillas. They need them, but they don't Well, have yeah, them. but if you get it in the bowl, then you're just looking at a little hey, brown rice. It's doable. I'm not a bowl guy. Really? We gotta hold my know. thing too. I that, can't be eating it with a fork yeah. if it's Mexican. Hold the bowl. That's right. Hold the yeah. bowl. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta. I was just in San Diego this weekend uh, with my daughter, and it's like, man, I eat a lot. So yeah, there's an issue there that I need to. I'm, I'm thinking I need to go to rehab. Like I can't control it. Like it's, it's an addiction. Maybe you need to find a 12 step program for this eating thing. I know. Is there such a thing? Yeah, Overeaters Anonymous. Oh, maybe maybe we need a new, maybe they need to sponsor the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can do that. I uh, yeah, I don't know. I got I got I got to get something going on. But I uh, you know I I get now I'll use the holiday excuse. Speaking of excuses, Bob Dave uh, has been uh, half ass training for uh, the Grandma's Marathon next year. And uh, before you got on before we got on the line with you today. Dave came up with another excuse on why he's not performing to the level is required to someone who's going to run a marathon. Therefore, <laughs> we need the marathon update. I will give you the marathon update. So about three months ago, I came up with this. I re I've always wanted to do it. It's kind of a bucket list thing. So I decided I'm going to run grandma's. And I, I... Which is what, June of next year? June 20th. All right. So... I really jumped into it with both, you know, feet and started going. Well, I ended up with a knee problem and it's taking a while to get this fixed. So I can't time. run as much as I need to. So I'm walking like five Ks, but I'm like, it's kind of speed walking them. But Darren, if I'm, I'm thinking, not running, I'm he thinks I'm not doing out. anything. I it's think not you need a, to quit. Absolutely not. And it's not a half-assed attempt. It's a full on do. I don't know. It's Bob, a go. Bob, what's your marathon history? <laughs> Uh, you know what? Driving 26 miles in a car is a chore. Uh -huh. so the See, right there, someone's trying to take the point change, two right? away Why from me. Why would you want to run? 26.2, <laughs> well, yeah, Bob. If you, I don't think you're going to get to 20. I don't think you're going to do it. Well, I am going to do it. I don't want to be negative, but I think we're we're on the verge of a, a collapse. Hey, you, you put on my knee procedures on your I website. Know. I know. So I've documented proof. I've videoed it being done. <sighs> Not acceptable. 
Hey, uh, well, why do you want to tear your knee up even more? What do you have? What do you have? Tendonitis? You got? Uh, I've had a bunch. Nah, got- I've had two ACLs done on my right knee, and I have an ACL, and I had my left knee done as well, and I currently that ACL is actually torn. I have a problem with my medial collateral ligament Pull on my left pin. knee. And some cartilage problem, but they just did this really cool thing. It's like the gel shots where they actually put gel into your knee to help you do it. I do need a total knee That's replacement cheating. on my right leg. Why don't you swim? Maybe you could swim. I'm not going to. They don't swim the, marathons. They could. The gel's not going to help your ligaments if they're torn. Well, it's not going to help help that, but it'll help the pain, like cushion it more. A little more, bu- so, a little more cushion. Yeah, I can run a 5K right now. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'll take that bet. Oh, you want to go? You're gonna run the whole way? A whole five (laughs) k. Oh, all right. All right. You're gonna run a five k, and that's you still have another twenty three miles or so if you do the marathon. Roger that. So the issue that's going on right now is I do these five k's on a treadmill, not yet on the street. Totally fake. Well, okay, it can be fake, but I'm trying to get my. I need to get my lungs and my heart going so I don't seven out while I'm on the (sighs) while I'm on the marathon track. We should take bets. Well, I'm fine to take bets. I'm gonna (laughs) win them all. But the problem is, Bob, is so I'll run, and then the next morning my knee swells up. Of course it does. That's the issue. Well, then quit. No. I'm telling you. I'm Dr. Tell- Meyer you, says you know I what? can do this, and I believe him. Do the ra- do it in a little rascal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you, you, you borrow one from Walmart, and you just go tooling through the thing with that. I, you got the bad knee. Yeah, I, I don't know that you're going to get away with Speaking that. Speaking of marathon, did you guys see on the news down in Iowa, this guy that getting, that's getting sued by the news lady, he was running a marathon. Oh, and, and he slapped she, her and ass. He slapped, how stupid do you have to be? And what are you thinking? I don't know. Come running on. Running by somebody that you, you don't know and slapping their ass. You used to be able to do that kind of ass. thing, and now everybody gets upset. How dumb is this guy to think that there aren't cameras everywhere? Did you see that, Bob? Okay, how about... Cameras everywhere. She was on TV. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. it was the camera that was going to catch it. <laughs> the one she worked at. But other than that, so yeah. is, so is that like a uh, like uh, is she going to get money out of that? Like, is that a thing? Well, she kind of should. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not I all for. Seen it, lit- I did hear about it. I'm not all for litigious crap, but I mean, come on. That he should pay her money just for being a flipping idiot. Well, well, it's a it, it is assault. And uh, but I don't know if it was an assault to in, it, with the intent to harm someone. This is one for the courts to sort out. Right. But he also has been banned from running in any of the races. <laughs> I did by hear that. that. Group. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Be. I mean, it was a stupid thing he did. Idiot. But I, I don't know. I people. I, I you know what? I was just in California for three days, and the world is a different place. Not. I'm not saying that that's okay to do. It's not okay. But God, everybody's so brr about everything. I think it's because I had to use plastic straws this week. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, paper straws. I always screw that up. I had to use paper straws. That really chaps my ass. Like I don't know why. I just don't like it. I'm not a I'm not a paper straw guy. I'm not going to conform. I don't know why. It bothers me. I can see that. But <laughs> this was in Iowa. This is this is flyover country. This is, you know, right. Well, yeah, it's just, I believe it was Iowa, and I, not to hijack the whole show on a marathon thing, but I just think that guy was really dumb. It was it, really dumb. I uh, and to Bob's point, I mean, the, she's doing a newscast on TV. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? His five seconds of fame. That's all he wanted. That's all that matters anymore. Hey, uh, Bob, one of the questions I had for you uh, is, what do you think of this Garrett Cole situation, switching from marathons to baseball? Uh, is, is there a limit to what the Yankees can spend on anything? No, <laughs> no they can spend whatever they want. But it's not like the NFL where there's a, there's a salary cap. How come, how come major league baseball doesn't have a salary cap? Well, they have some sort of, I think, a don't they have a luxury tax, but they don't care. They'll pay anything. Cause to I, make it, how to do make we it compete work for with them, that? They don't care. You don't. You That's can't. why the twins will never win another world series. You can't. I, I think that. I mean, obviously, we uh, we it would have been great to get them, but how how they're not going to spend. Okay, what's our most expensive million? pitcher? Barrios right now, and I think he got paid five point four last year. Is that right? That's got it. That's close. Well, th- that 4. means he's 4. still making close to thirty 
or 30 million less a year than Garrett Cole. Who's making I know. 34 it. million. 34, 35 million. Isn't that nuts? About 35. We'll round it off to 35. Yeah, but after tax. I mean, <laughs> we can live on that shit. But Strasburg just signed for 224. Was that for five or six years, though? No, his was for uh, seven. Actually, he's the one at 35. But I did my math wrong a second there. Garrett Cole is at 36 million. So he's making more than 30 million a year over uh, Barrios. Barrios. Wow. And Barrios, when he's up, he's in for huge, though. And all this crap going on, too, don't you think it just takes Madison Bumgarner totally out of our radar now? I don't think he's ever really – he could be on their radar, but I don't think he ever was a realistic signing because if you're Bumgarner, why would you come here? Yeah, they did. They played better, but I don't think they're going to – they have to depend on getting the type of power hitting and home runs they had last year – it was a for them. It was the closest thing to a magical season, and if they're deadening the ball and using the ball they used in the playoffs instead of regular season, yeah, those home runs disappear, and that creates a problem. A lot of those one one run, two run games go away. Is this? I've, I've heard by, a little I mean, bit winning about by this one or two controversy. Run. Is this a real thing? Yes, like yeah. like juiced balls. I I heard something like that uh, going on, and the commissioner was digging into it. <laughs> Do we do yeah. we know anything about that? <laughs> well, just look at the numbers. Well, I know the home runs were ridiculous this year, but and then uh, look at the Bob made a great point. Look at the playoff numbers. Oh yeah. Well, and and so does that mean that we actually have to find pitchers in the farm system and and try and keep them until the Yankees get them? I mean, how how do okay. the Twins compete? Let's say Barrios becomes one of the top pitchers in the American League, and and that uh, remains to be seen. But if he does. They can never afford to keep him. Nope. So he will leave. Absolutely. That's the problem. Is he our they can't co- afford to keep him, and they can't afford a guy like Garrett Cole or David Price, who went to the Reds, the Red Sox for what seven years, two seventeen. Yeah, but isn't I mean, has there been any talk about a salary cap or any kind of limitation on on baseball, or is it just a? It's not even. It's just go. No, it. because the revenue is different in baseball where the Yankees are not sharing the revenue they're getting from their TV deal. Like in the NFL, they all share equally. It's not like that in baseball. Okay. Okay. So their, um, uh, their market, uh, from media perspective is much stronger. So they have, of course it is. Yeah. They're making tons more money than the, uh, the twins are. Although the twins are making money. There's no doubt about it. But just imagine the difference in the, media and the broadcast rights for the New York Yankees versus the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, right. Right. Wow. I don't I don't uh yeah, I don't know. It's just sad. It would be nice to figure out how to cap that or find some way that cuz I mean, nobody's going to compete with that, are they? I mean, I suppose no. a few California teams have that kind of pull. Well, the Dodgers, I mean, the Red Sox have, have done well. Houston, you know, got the I don't know that Washington is going to return. They kind of put things together in a late rush. Yeah. Um, so they did, they did fine, but that worked out great for them. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the the Dodgers have a pretty serious payroll, don't they? I, I mean, don't know what their payroll is, but it's got to be pretty serious. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just bummed. I, the yeah. thing with the Twins, though, you, you just have to enjoy it for what it is, and then every five, six, seven years, we're going to be really good. Next year, I mean, they have other other issues too. Well, you know, they, they, maybe they can huge, trade though. Rosario for a pitcher. I don't. I haven't heard much about that, but. What are they going to get? A prospect? They're you know they're not going to. Miami's not going to give up one of their top pitchers for Rosario. Just no. you can't. Top pitchers are hard to get. Ugh. I mean, look at we had Dobnik starting in the flipping playoffs. Yeah. Well. Oh yeah. We we were uh, you know strong all season and then uh, well that's a Minnesota thing. I mean, when's the last time before this that the Twins were good? Or good to great. <laughs> 91? No, they weren't even good to great then. <laughs> Do you well, I mean, the early years with Garden Hire, they went to uh, the playoffs a number of years. Like, like we were talking 15, over 15 years ago. Right. Yeah, I, I, so, I think I think pitching's a big part of it, though. Like, that, we were seriously lacking in the playoffs with the arm. We didn't, we didn't have it. No. Anyway, more relevant sports. How about some football? We got the uh, Chargers this weekend. We do. I just left there. There were there were Vikings fans suited up already. Yeah, I flew down with a couple. Hmm. That's dedication right there. I don't know. It wouldn't be bad. Seventy degrees watching football. Why not? We're going down to the Philip Rivers Austin Eckler show. That scares me a little bit. 
Eh, what are you gonna do? I uh, what what do you, what are you thinking about this Charger contest there, Bob? Here's your problem for the Vikings. They will have to buck the trends that they have, which is they don't play well on grass and they don't play well in the mountain or the western time zone. And this is the west time zone. They uh, it's the record with uh, under Zimmer is not good. They also have a real problem. They the only chance they have of winning is they have to put a fierce pass rush on Philip Rivers because if he has any time, he's going to chew up those cornerbacks. Oh, for sure. Xavier Rhodes among them, Mike Hughes. That's their problem. And they do have a good pass rush. However, their team is built for turf, the artificial surface, because they can really fly and they can, they have a lot more speed on that. When you put them on grass, you just don't get the traction you have on turf. So it will they will not be as fast as they would be, say, at U.S. Bank Stadium. And that might be enough to give Rivers time to find his receivers. I do picks for the Pioneer Press. I did not pick the Vikings to win this game. Of course, I've been wrong before. Right. Because I've picked – I, I, I usually pick against the Vikings. The Chargers are 5-8. and eight. And doesn't. generally, that would mean something. But when you're playing the Vikings, that really doesn't well, mean anything. Yeah, 5-8, and eight, but coming off the best game of the year where they blew out Jacksonville – and Philip Rivers had his, by far his best game. With his, certainly his rating, he had, I think, three touchdowns to start the season. He had three against Jacksonville, and he threw over 300 yards. It was a game more similar to what he had many of the games last year than he's done this year. They've been terrible. He had offensive line problems, still does to a point, and that's the key. Uh, watch the right side for the Chargers, which would be the left side of the Vikings' defense, Daniel Hunter is going against a tackle who has given up uh, probably about as many of the pressures and sacks um, or more than any right tackle in football. So that's going to be a key spot to watch. Yeah. Did, <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, no, I was just I was just going to say, I think, uh, you know, but it's it's uh, the, the, the Vikings are doing well, but they're not they're not rolling like a powerful playoff team. So is this just another case of we'll make the playoffs and we'll be done the first game? I don't. Mean, well, I'm you not convinced know. they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's Is pretty it, they tight. Have, they got to win out, don't they? They Yes, they do. But at here's this the, point, we don't best, need any help. Here's the best case. Well, no, except they can't afford to lose to the Chargers, to the Packers, or to the Bears. Here's what their best hope is. The Bears are – this is the last really chance, other than when the Vikings play them. The Bears are playing the Packers. If the Bears can beat the Packers – then the Vikings and the Bears, or excuse me, the Vikings and the Packers are tied. And that game next week, basically that next Monday night, comes down to a, playing for the division title. Of course, the Vikings could beat the Packers, have the edge for the division title, then lose to the Bears in the final game. <laughs> so yes. nothing is a given with this team. You cannot look at the Vikings, ah, oh, that's a win. There's, there's no such thing as, ah, oh, that's a win with this team. No, no. And actually, I... Yeah, I I'm just looking at the calendar here, and now that I know that that Packer game's on a Monday, I'm kind of pissed. Yeah, that, that Monday night crew is dog crap. They are so bad. <laughs> is that uh, uh, Booger and and uh, the announce? Oh, it's just Joe brutal. Tessitore. Is it's that it? brutal. Randy Moss is on there. Their pregame thing is dreadful. But don't watch it. Just watch the game. I'm gonna. You're in control I'm, of that. I'm gonna. Yeah. Yeah. So Let's this skip game, right to it. this game scares me a little bit, and it, Bob pointed out one really important part. If Rivers has time to throw the ball, we're in big trouble because they have so many weapons. Yeah, well, and our our uh, defensive backs are struggling to say the least, right? Yeah, and yes, us, and also two weeks ahead. ago, the Vikings struggled against a run game, and Melvin Gordon is back and he's playing better. Austin Eckler is should be, you know, he might be the best. He not might. He's the most versatile back they have Absolutely. in terms of as a runner and receiver. So that's a, a good one-two punch at running back that they'll be facing. Yeah, I, I that was the Seahawks game you're talking about, right? They yeah. uh, they just got walked all over on that thing. It was dreadful. What, give a guy time. They, we just don't have corners that can cover long enough. We don't. And Rhodes, no. I don't know what has happened to him. But I'll tell you what. You, the other day in that play where he twisted his ankle and uh, the hitman inter intercepted the ball, you saw that. Do you see how bad Rhodes got beat on that? If the quarterback overthrows that ball or throws that ball on and not overthrows it, that's a touchdown. Yeah. Rhodes is not 
playing well. What happened to him? He was well, maybe Bob decent, knows. I don't wasn't know. He? I, well, I've rarely seen a player deteriorate as quickly as he has. Right. It could be. I mean, there's a these guys take a beating. It could be that his body just got beat down over. You know, it hasn't been. He's been playing for you know for a number of years. When you go back to high school, college, he does not have an injury that's noted by the team. But there's got to be something wrong there. But right. he's not. He hasn't been in the. He hasn't. How long has he been on the Vikings? Four, uh, five or six years. I could I could take a quick look for you if you, if it's uh four. But it, it doesn't match. See, the, he's a lot of these guys. Thirteen. There's also an issue with guys losing confidence. Yeah. He looks like he's lost speed and confidence. Yeah. That's a bad combination. He can't press anymore. I mean, he just gets just used up. And he does, I mean, not to be, I'm not picking on the guy. I mean, he does make some decent plays, but the majority, they're not, he's not playing well. He's not playing well helping the run he, game. He's just not playing well. He played better in the run game than he does in the pass game now, and that's great, except your corner. I mean, Deion Sanders never wanted to tackle anyone, and right. it didn't matter because no one was completing a pass again. <laughs> right. They, so, uh, uh, of the choice, that's what, what you want. What, what about uh, – what do you think of the uh, the Gophers getting Auburn on uh, New Year's Day? Uh, we will find out just how good that Gopher team is because they beat Auburn, they're going to make a lot of people believe – that P.J. Fleck has t- truly turned this program around. But if you look at their season, the record, you know, 10-2, and two, very nice. But they have one wow win. One win that they weren't expected to have, and that was against Penn State. The two other teams that had they beaten either of those, they would be much more regarded had they beaten Iowa or Wisconsin. They were able to keep the Iowa game fairly close. They got blown out by Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. that was so, ugly. If, but if they could beat Auburn, I don't think they can. But if, if they do, it brings another level of respect to the team. The worst thing that could happen to them, on January 1st in the Outback Bowl, people all across the country watching is if they get blown out. Right. Which is not beyond the realm of possibility. <laughs> well, they are a Minnesota definite, team. <laughs> no, it's a definite possibility. No, I mean, Auburn's good. Right. I think the Gophers playing on New Year's Day – is a good thing, right? I mean, we haven't done that in a while, have we? No, of course it's we a good thing. We always get some deal. bullshit bowl. We're no, now- it's a very good thing, but they have to show up. Yeah. You know, and they have no to guarantee. Because in these other bowls they played, nobody really cared around the country if they won or lost. But you're now on national television. The good news maybe is, is they're going against the Citrus Bowl, which is on the same time. What? That's the Alabama-Wisconsin game. No, Alabama-Michigan uh, Pe- uh, Michigan game. So what's the ripple effect of a strong showing in this bowl game for the Gophers? Is it uh, do anything for us next year, or is it just giving us a little better uh, recruiting? Oh, club? it helps recruit. I mean, that's the whole thing. It helps. Yeah. It helps your. Uh, it helps in many ways. The respect that you get nationally with recruiting. I mean, kids see the team and say, "I want to play for this guy." He's got. He does the one thing that. Well, there's more than one thing, but one of the things the Gophers have under PJ Fleck is they have a balanced attack. They got a really strong running game and a really strong passing game. He's got terrific receivers. Yeah. For sure. And a good young quarterback. Well, that quarterback is killer. What is he, a sophomore? Yes. So yeah, we, he is. We got a couple more years with him. What's the uh and I'm not familiar he, with this receiver thing is is I've never seen in my lifetime the Gophers have three receivers that probably are NFL receivers. I don't I don't yeah, know they, if you agree with that. But I no, think I there's three of them. I, well, you have a shot of having the three running backs could all turn out to be NFL running backs too. Not, right. you know, and I don't think they'll be drafted as high as the receivers could be, but they could make teams as backups and as special teams players, and maybe yeah. you know certainly play some too. Rodney Smith could make an NFL team. So could uh, well, so so could uh, Shannon Brooks and Ibrahim. What's the uh, what's the Abraham is a great running back. Ages of these guys are they are they. All, King's a senior, I think, and the other senior. ones are underclassmen. Yeah, I don't know the breakdown. Yeah. So we should have a good uh, year next year regardless. Well, we're losing a lot of defense next year. Ooh. So I think there is there 11 seniors, and then oh, wow. seven, six of them are starters. I'm not 100% sure on that. but Well, Antoine Winfield, is, you know, he's a sophomore, so he'll, he would be back. I think they're secondary. They have some young guys back there, and the secondary has been – Really strong. It's probably it's probably the strongest secondary they've had in fifty years in terms of how good they are 
uh, and having multiple good defensive players. And this is why recruiting comes in. He has to get other guys he can plug in and take over and be better than what he's losing. Yeah. That's what recruiting is all about. And he is a, the guy is a good recruiter. You can't take that away from him. No. My only knock on him is, and I think it, it was obvious or evident in the Iowa game and the Wisconsin game, unfortunately, it seems to be the worst thing he does as a coach is coach. He's not <laughs> a great game day coach. No, the game plan for the Wisconsin game was not decent. Well, it's not even the game plan. What you have to do, Wisconsin against the Gophers, they adapted on the fly. They saw mm-hmm. what wasn't working, and they changed what they were doing. The Gophers didn't do that. Now, it's easy when you're playing from the lead. And he did – I mean, he, there was no indication in the Penn State game of him making many mistakes. But I don't know – we will put it this way. I don't think we ever should see him again on fourth and two from his 37 punting because what that <laughs> tells your offense is I have no faith in you. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, the defense will hold him. Well, no, it doesn't really work that way. Why not put faith in an offense that you have been lauding all year? To me, that was like in 98, Denny Green taking a knee and playing for overtime when overtime was sudden death. You had to bring that up. (laughs) That's one of the worst. I was in that damn place when that happened. In 98? You you were probably there, too. Do you remember how quiet it got when Morton Anderson kicked that field goal and you could hear the Atlanta Atlanta Falcons players screaming and yelling? Well, I was a game off because I had predicted um, when the season, when the playoff or postseason began, that the Vikings would go to the Super Bowl and lose on Gary Anderson missing because <laughs> he had, hadn't missed all year. Right. I was one game off. He missed in the championship game. He did. Oopsie. And See, Morton this is why it. I needed to bring Bob in because I don't have the sports knowledge that uh, that either of you have because I. Ah, you're. You're, You're fine. doing fine. The memory is lacking. That but. was so brutal. That's the worst Minnesota loss. And back then, you could just chuck the ball up to Randy Moss, and he'd go get it. I cannot believe he took a knee. Now you got me mad again. Why are there Why are there so many missed field goals uh, in oh. football today? Not just the Vikings, but there's a lot of missed field goals. It well, seems like pressure on these guys. I'll, I'll I'll tell you why I think the Vikings have been so horrible. I think the special teams coordinator they had ruined Blair Walsh and other kickers because Walsh was terrific. Prefer? He, it, it, what's that? Prefer? You prefer? Yes. Yeah. Wa- Walsh was terrific when he had a guy who could hold, but this prefer insisted every punter had a hold. The last punt, the, the guy they had holding last year, prefer's last year with the Vikings had not ever held before. Hmm. And what happened? Good kickers were missing because he didn't know what he was doing. Blair Walsh, when he missed against Seattle, that was the, the, the uh, 27 yard field goal. And, uh, uh, when, when I was talking about us bank stadium, yeah. that would have been what in, um, what year was that? I don't know. It was like 2016, something like that. But that guy had the laces. It, it goes back to Ace Ventura, laces out. <laughs> he had the laces. You can't have la- laces in. You can't have laces in, especially I, uh, when it's like fourteen below. Right. Where, where is he now? Is he in the league? I don't believe he's with anyone right now. He actually had wound up with the Seahawks for a while. He's bounced around, but I'll, uh, fortunately, thanks to the magic of the Google. What, are they could, uh, what about that other dude that was it our punter or who was the one who had such a problem with all the rookie? Uh, and are you talking about the Green Carlson, Bay game? If you're talking about Carlson, he's now yeah. with uh he's yeah. with the Raiders. Raiders, yeah. Oh. And he's doing well. Was he's a, who was the one who had no the one. problem with the team and like uh That would be all of them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I thought it was like a weird thing, like a I don't know. Oh, like, you're talking about like a uh, gay rights thing or some Oh, what's his name? That was that was the Blair Walsh era, wasn't it? Yeah, he was the punter. Yeah, Chris Cluey is who you're thinking yes. of. Cluey was the last really good holder they had until his Colquitt seems to hold pretty good. But Cluey was a one of the best holders you'll ever find. I don't and know. I, that's why Walsh had a, a he was a basically all pro as a rookie, and he had held for Ryan Longwell before that. I, so he was a terrific holder. I right. think uh, I just think that the field goal kicking has gone downhill. I actually was there a blocked one uh, just recently. Well, okay, a little bit of it is they move. You're probably aware of this, but they did move back the extra point. Yeah, but we've even missed close ones. Well, I understand. It's it's not as easy as it once was. Evidently, 
Maybe the balls juice. Yeah, maybe the balls are juice. <laughs> I don't know. There's juice a, balls. There's a ton of pressure. There's a lot of guys on the street. I mean, look at the flipping uh, Patriots. They're going through kickers like I go through what would, Raisin Brand. I think. Uh, and now they got this new. Did you see that? They signed that trick kicker guy. No. The Patriots? Yeah. Was that. I, I was either watching the Patriots game last week or, or uh, somebody had a really old kicker like. Old God, I apologize. My memory's horrible, but uh, they had uh, geriatric city on the old kicking team, and uh, he did well. He knocked her down. You talking about Adam Vinatieri? Is that who it is? Is he? Well, for- he's, he's like uh, he's he's forty six years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's him. And he'd been kicking with the uh, with the Colts. Yeah, still is. Yeah, is that who he's with now? Yeah, Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh, he. Man. W- but you're right, kind of, because he was kicker? at New England. What's a trick kicker? Oh, this guy kicks. He used to be a soccer player, so he juggles the ball with his feet and then kicks 40-yard field goals before it hits the ground. He was kicking 80-yard field goals on YouTube, <sighs> showing it, and they signed him. What? What? Well, now I'm going to watch. I think it sounds <laughs> Well, he's on their practice squad. but We looked up this Josh Gable, who's the trick uh, kicker for the New England Patriots. He's now on their practice squad. Right. But uh, it could be interesting, and I was I was mentioning to Dave when I thought we were disconnected, and obviously weren't. Um, is this the new way of finding talent? Is going to YouTube and saying, you know, find me somebody who kicks crazy stuff on YouTube, and now we're going to bring them onto the practice squad? That's crazy. Well, the uh, one of the which team was it? I think it was the Oakland A's signed a a pitcher who they saw throwing heat. At one of these places that measures your the miles per hour of pitches <laughs> at oh, Valley Fair. No, that's right though. <laughs> that I remember Fair, that the Cardi it does guy. Happen. <laughs> that was last summer, right? Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you what: if you get a guy that can kick eighty yards, <laughs> you take a shot at him to see what he can do. Oh, I'm telling you, it's right on. You can look it up. His name's Josh Gable in YouTube. It's unbelievable. I uh, yeah, I mean, the ball flies off his foot. It does, except. He, I'm looking at it. He has a tripod that gives him about eight inches to a foot well, off the ground. It's a lot different from kicking when someone's holding it on the well, grass. And it's a lot different when there's, you know, 11 guys coming at you who all, you know, weigh over 300 pounds and want to take your head off. Absolutely. That, that adds is. a certain element that they probably don't have on the YouTube video. Absolutely. But if the guy can kick 40 yard field goals. Huh? They'll put him on because they don't have a kicker right hey, now. Hey, he's already doing better than I am. He's already uh, made the practice squad, which I actually it's never even been an interest of mine at all to play football. I uh, I gave it a run and it did not work in fourth grade. I'm out. So anyway, we got to wrap this thing up, Bob. We're running long. All the sports talk on a Friday. I like it though. At least the snow stopped. Change. We're not talking well, that's about nachos. You, you know so much about sports. Oh yeah, yeah. I really <laughs> showed off my <laughs> uh, playbook here. Now, I am going to correct myself because I just watched him kick. He was using that thing that looks like a tripod. It was off the ground, and that held it in place instead of having a, someone hold it for him. Wow. Hey Bob, who the do guy's you, got a leg? Yes, he does. Who do you think? What are you? Who are you picking in the Packer Bear game? Uh, I see. I think the Bears are they, they're one three in a row, yep. but they've played really bad teams. So the Packers should beat them, but the Bears they can play defense. And if Mitchell Trubisky does not screw up, which he's been known to do, is that a Sunday tilt this week? Yeah, it'll be before just before the Vikings game, I yeah. believe. It's probably mm-hmm. going to be on TV. Too. I'm sure it'll be on TV. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it'll be the local game here before the Vikings kick in. Yeah. So how do you think? And I know we're going a little long, but I do want to ask this. So how? Here's how I see this working out. The Vikings get in. Obviously, the Packers get in. The Vikings go to Lambeau Field for the first playoff game. Do you see that working? Well, if that's what happens, I think the Vikings can beat them. I do, too. Because I'm not impressed with the, the Packers. They got Rodgers, and that's it. I mean, but, they have yes, they have it, one good receiver. And but, Aaron Jones can run a little bit. I mean, but if you uh, put some – I mean, if, you, if your linebackers are filling the gaps, he has a hard time. You have to. It'll, it won't be a low-scoring game because Rodgers will tear apart the cornerbacks. Then again, <laughs> the Vikings can get to him. Yeah, you know. They, so it, it uh, it'll be an interesting game, and you know it would be bitter cold. So that does affect how the game goes, and, and you know, a lot of mistakes get made when it's really cold. I find it interesting that Zimmer is such a cornerback guru, 
or at least that's what people say, and our cornerbacks are in the situation they're in right now. That's just uh, yeah. He's well, he's ironic, the, isn't it? He's, he's, the, he's the defense guy, right? I mean, that's his whole deal. He's oh yeah, Mister Defense. Yeah, Mister D. That's it. That's we. That's what we should have called my show, Mister D. Mister D. Let's put a plug in this thing, gentlemen. Right on. Until next nice. time. Hey, Bob. Thanks for the time. We will. Uh, nice we'll check in me. with you and. You can hear uh, Bob every day on the BS Network. He running how many different shows you got? I don't know, half a dozen or so. But the BS show, Monday through Friday, if you happen to live in uh, St. Cloud, WBHR, WNMT in Hibbing, and KTAL in Duluth, available at noon and again at 6. There you go. Otherwise, you can always catch him on the queue Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You got it, Pally. Telling you. All right, sir. You have a great weekend, and we'll see you you Tuesday. All right. See you. So long. Yep. All right. right. Peace. Peace. That's it. That's the end. That's a wrap. Read the shtick. That's a wrap for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends. If you'd like to reach out, you can use the studio line at 612-504-6500 or by email, the DK Project Podcast at gmail.com. And of course, there's always social media at the DK Project Podcast. Thanks for tuning in.